Okay, good. We're ready to rock and roll here. <laughs> this is wonderful. We have 90 people now. And I think there are many others also gathered etherically here. Um, I'm starting this at two in the afternoon so we could try to get as many people around the world. This Ascended Master Retreat has actually some type of activity been going on since around Thanksgiving and will continue um, for another couple of weeks approximately. Um, this is a time, it's always been a sacred time, even before the birth of Jesus, when the light is dimmest and people gather together to generate more light within themselves. When the outer light is less, people need to generate more inner light. And it's traditionally a time when people get together with their families or friends and share gratitude and love with each other. And it's, it's sort of a shame that some of the um, political forces now have tried to destroy Christmas and say it's a form of oppression or mind control or something like that. That's ridiculous. It's always been a time in every culture around the world, uh, even in the most so-called primitive societies where people get together and celebrate. Even the Great Pyramid in Egypt, which I visited, has a slit in the side where the light comes through and hits a certain point at this time of year. And also the uh, megaliths in Glastonbury in England they had a way, the ancient peoples had a way to determine the exact time of the uh, winter solstice. So this was a very major time in all cultures to begin to generate more light. And um, so even when we finish our meditation, this activity will continue and I I hope to give you the tools, which you may have already, so you can continue to participate in this retreat on your own. Um, and this is a time especially to look at ourselves and to ask, what is it that we would like to change in ourselves? What is it we would like to uh, leave back and not take into the new year. So you can say, I am being shown what I would like to eliminate in myself. And uh, sometimes the results are quite shocking. Um, I am being shown who I have resentment toward or anger or fear, any negative quality and why do I have that? And what did I learn from that? And how can I let go of that? Uh, I've been quite shocked myself when I look within and I see, well, I blame my mother for certain personality traits that I have, but I realized my mother was just a mirror to show me what I needed to work on in myself. So. You know, psychologists say to when you look at a dream, you see everything in the dream as a part of yourself. So when you look at what's happening in the world or you look at the people in your life, you can say, what is it that this is teaching me? What is it I need to work on? So we are all being influenced by and influencing the mass consciousness. So each of us especially those of us who know how to contact the great God presence can have a tremendous impact on what's happening in the world. And I will tell you something funny that I discovered. Um, you wonder, how is it we all feel so close in this group? Um, I had an experience once, uh, not too long ago, I was talking with a friend on the phone 
And she liked to talk quite a bit and would go on 10 or 15 minutes without taking a breath sometimes. So I thought while I'm talking or while I'm listening to her, I can watch some, I can watch the news on the computer. Well, after about two minutes of watching the news, she said, are you still there? She said, I couldn't feel you anymore. And then I realized, I noticed that sometimes too, if I'm talking on the phone with someone and they're doing something else, I can feel they're not with me. That is because when you're connected with someone, even verbally over the phone, your light body is there with them. It's not actually the light body, it's a light body. It's actually the higher mental body. So whenever you think you are somewhere, that higher mental body goes there. So I made a vow, you know, in the future, if I'm talking with someone on the phone to give them undivided attention and not do something else, because you can feel it when someone is gone. So all of us now, because we have a common focus, we are all together in our higher mental body. And this is what in the I Am books or the Green books of the St. Germain Foundation, they would call projected consciousness. You can project your consciousness not only anywhere on earth, but anywhere in creation, because that higher mental body goes through the world of thought where everything exists and can communicate or participate in any activity. So that's why it's so important not to feel cut off from anybody or cut off from what's happening in the world. You can influence everything that is happening in the world. If you don't like what's happening in your government, see yourself above the Capitol sending rays of light, invoking the violet Tara, invoking Archangel Michael, uh, invoking Mother Mary, all these great gods and goddesses to come down. That will do much more good than marching in the street or criticizing or getting angry. When you get angry, that contributes to what they call the sinister force. All those negative emotions, fear, anger, jealousy, greed, feed the dark force. This is what is called the Battle of Armageddon. It doesn't have to be a physical plane war. It's going on right now in what's called the astral world, where these forces are battling each other. And whenever you get angry or express a negative emotion, you're feeding the dark forces. So it's very important to be aware of what we're feeling and to correct those tendencies. Um, and when you catch yourself feeling angry or jealous or greed, something like that, or selfish in any way, to stop and say, I am dissolving and consuming that, I turn that around and I send love and light and compassion and understanding to that person or that situation. So this is a very appropriate time to look at those things. So I thought um, before we go anywhere, we could really uh, do this as an initial meditation to just um, slow down our minds and to ask, I am being shown what I would like to eliminate from myself for the coming year. So why don't we just sort of close our eyes, um, or you can keep them slightly open if you like, but maybe looking downward, and just observe the in-breath and the out-breath. And it helps to keep the tip of the tongue against the roof of your mouth. And feel the energy settle 
around the center of your chest. It's not your physical heart. It's more over the sternum. And this is where your light body is anchored to the physical body. So this is the center of the I, the I that I am in your physical body. And just settle into that. Say, I am being shown what I would like to leave behind in 2019. And I offer all of that to the violet consuming flame. I call on the violet Tara to surround me with a pillar of violet light that is blazing up in, around, and through me and through my aura, dissolving and consuming anything less than perfection by the power of God, which I am. I am the violet Tara, sending the violet consuming flame throughout the earth, dissolving and consuming everything less than perfection. I am divine wisdom, forgiveness, and love flowing forth to humanity. I am being shown how I would like to be different in the coming year, what qualities I would like to develop in myself. I now see myself as being that new person. If in the past, a certain person has triggered you, see yourself interacting with that person in the coming year and see how you will change that situation, how you will not be triggered by them or how you will not trigger them. I am being shown new ways of acting toward others and toward life itself. I will no longer see myself as a victim. I take full responsibility 
for my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And I go forth into the new year as a master presence who is here to serve and aid others in whatever way I can. And I call on the ascended masters, the great host of light, to come forth and help me. Now I would like to journey forth to the Tetons. And I'm going to say there is a great audience chamber there where beings come not only from all over the earth, but from other star systems even even great cosmic beings and the archangels. And I'm not going to describe the inside of the chamber there because the light is so dazzling, it is really difficult to see. But what I'm going to suggest is there is a private audience chamber there of our beloved Master Saint Germain. I'll show you the picture. This is the precipitated picture he gave to Godfrey Ray King. That's how you may see him. Um, and you can ask to have a private audience with him. And I don't know his schedule, so I was not able to arrange time slots for each of you. But if you send your heart out to him, I'm sure he will make a space for you where you can talk with him privately. And he already knows what is going on in your life. So you don't need to spend an hour telling him but a time will come when you will be before him and he may say, yes, I know my son, or I know my daughter, what you've been going through. And here is what I suggest. And this is your work for the coming year. Now you may not hear this audibly. You may simply wake up in the morning with a knowing or it may come to you over the next few weeks. You may feel an impetus to do something different or simply to complete projects you're working on. It doesn't mean there's going to be a dramatic change, but frequently these big changes in our life do come um, unexpectedly. And uh, it's not that everything changes on January 1st, but you may get the inner guidance tonight or tomorrow, and you may be shown a plan that will unfold over the coming year. Now, one year, uh, St. Germain revealed to me all the major things that were going to happen to me and I didn't like a single thing he showed me. Uh, one of those was changing my name <laughs> to Peter Mount Shasta. <laughs> but I said, I'm not going to do that. That's crazy. And f he finally said, well, we shall see. Anyway, um, so it's not always wisdom to tell somebody everything that's going to happen. It's better frequently to let those things unfold on their own. However, as things come up in your life over the coming year, you will have a knowingness that it is right. You will feel in your heart that that is 
part of the plan that the master showed you. And if you're not sure, you start to go in that direction and either it will feel better or it will feel worse. This is called meditation in action. You observe yourself, you observe your feelings, you observe your, what you're feeling in your heart. And if you go toward an objective and it's the right thing, it will feel good, it will feel better. And if it's not right, the energy will go out of it, it won't feel good. Then I have to say that there are many years when I've awakened on New Year's morning and I haven't known anything different than before I went to sleep. So don't, don't feel despair or that you did something wrong. The masters know what you should know and when you should know it. The important thing is that you're making um, a surrender to your higher self and to the masters to be aligned with your higher purpose. You know, frequently your higher self, well, there is a plan for everybody that comes from the higher self, but sometimes the higher self says, if you want to do it your way, fine, go right ahead. I've got forever to wait for you to do it my way. So I think a lot of us are at the point where we got tired of playing around and experimenting with the human will and we want to manifest the divine plan and achieve mastery in our own lives. And that mastery is not being willful. People think mastery is, I want to do this and I want to do that. That's not it at all. Mastery is being completely aligned with your I am presence, which is one with the ascended masters. So what I'm going to say is we can go forth now in our light bodies to that retreat in the Tetons. But feel free later to, uh, we will end the meditation after a while, but between now and tomorrow morning, uh, feel free to go back into meditation. And uh, as you are called inwardly, because the amount of light that is being poured forth there, or that will shortly be poured forth, is transcendental. And uh, you will absorb that and have access. It's like getting your batteries recharged, in a sense. So then what I'm going to suggest is before you go to bed tonight, say, I am going forth tonight to the retreat at the Tetons to participate in the Ascended Master Retreat. This is not so much the, the higher mental body. This is actually your light body. It's the body you go forth in every night. So we have a number of higher bodies, but if you can go forth in this body, which we all do when we go to sleep, that's what happens. You go forth in your higher body. Most of the time, we don't remember where we went. But if you call to go forth tonight, before you go to sleep, to the retreat at the Royal Teton, uh, and trust that the masters will take you if it's meant to be. And I will tune in to all of you the way in our Violet, Violet Tara group, it's beautiful. There's a wave of violet light that goes around the world because there are people in different countries that start to keep the wave going in their own country. Like we may start here at seven o'clock in the morning on the West Coast, and then it goes, you know, Chicago, the East Coast, Boston, then to Europe and so on. Nigeria, Ethiopia, Korea, all over the world, that wave of violet flame keeps going. So tonight at 10 o'clock, I will go back into meditation. 
uh, probably even before then, because this is always a very sacred time for me. I try to tune in to what's going on and try to align myself with the masters and with the higher plan. So I will be joining together with you again, those of you who choose to. So that would be like six in the morning in Iceland, I believe, or in Europe, in Germany, probably. Um, but on a higher level, there is no time anyway. So the important thing, though, is to make that call. And then you can also say, in the morning when I awaken, I am remembering what I have been shown. And I am manifesting God's divine plan in my life through the coming year. So let us close our eyes again, go back into meditation. The tip of the tongue against the roof of the mouth. Feel the rise and fall of your chest. And just think of that, there was a picture of the Teton Mountains in Wyoming that was on the email I sent out. So as your attention is on that, as your thought is on those mountains, feel love at the same time. So the combination of the love in your heart and the thought in your mind will draw you to the Tetons. So we are all going there now in our higher bodies. So someone on top of that mountain, actually there, there are guards there guarding the entrance and they see us approaching like shooting stars. When you travel in your light body, it's perceived like a shooting star. And you see light coming out of the top of the Royal Teton, which is where the entrance is into the mountain. And if you would like a greater description, I suggest you read in Unveiled Mysteries. There are a couple of chapters describing this. But we go down now into that tube, down into the tunnel, and the great brass doors, bronze doors, open for us. And there is a sound of trumpets as we enter. And all of the ascended masters that we know of are there, and they welcome us. There is also at the head of the hall, the great divine director and the Lord Maha Chohan. And there is light pouring in by beings whose light is so great they could not enter in their physical body. They have to pour light in. They focus their consciousness from above the earth. like mighty Cyclopea, whose activity is the all-seeing eye. Also the great archangels, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and all the other archangels whose love and power and wisdom is without limit. So feel that light filling your light body. And I will be silent now as you just bask in that light and consciousness.
I now joyously accept the God presence that I am. I rejoice in the God presence that I am. I am the God presence that I am. Keep saying that to yourself and feeling it. I am wholly pure and perfect. I love the light. I am protected illumined, supplied with every good thing, and sustained and kept healthy by the light throughout the coming year. And I give gratitude to the light. And now we rise and we bow to the masters. And there is a beautiful chime that sounds signaling, signaling our departure. And we move back out into the foyer and back up through the tube to the surface, to the summit of the Royal Teton. So oh, I'm going to bid goodbye to you for now. Some of you may want to return inside, which is fine. Others may have commitments where you need to return home. But I will be meditating with you again later on and other masters will be arriving and departing throughout the next 24 hours. So some of you may have business with those other masters. By business, I mean your particular path of evolution may be under their guidance and they will call you 
back into the retreat to work with you privately. This is not something we can do as a group. So I'm going to say, keep tuned in to your heart and you will know where to be and when to return to the Royal Teton. So I love you all and wish you many blessings, happiness, and success in all your enterprises in 2020. May you all have 2020 vision in the next year, which is perfect vision. Remember, the light of God never fails. The light of God never fails. The light of God never fails. And you are that light. What you should say is, I am that light. I am the light of God that never fails. I am God in action. Many blessings.